Hello and welcome to the latest in our series of video guides presented by Tourism NI featuring a range of marketing industry experts giving you tips on how to make the most out of your tourism business. Well today we're going to kick things off by talking about branding. We'll be answering some of your questions like what is a brand, how can I create a brand for my business and how can a brand help me attract customers. Our panel today is Mags Byrne, a digital marketing officer at Tourism Northern Ireland and Ed Henderson from leading local agency Genesis Advertising. Ed, let's start at the start, break it right down in simple terms. What is a brand? Um, okay, so I think, I think commonly a lot of people when they think about branding and they think about brands, they think about their logo and their colors and their taglines and things like that. Whereas actually the brand is kind of, in tourism, the brand is everything. The brand is your business from top to bottom. So it's the, the way that you conduct your business, the food that you serve, the, the, the people that you employ, um, the way that they are with customers. All of that kind of adds up to, to the sum of, uh, of, of its parts and that, that effectively is your brand. So. Um, for tourism businesses specifically, it's important for branding to kind of just 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 work in all areas of the business, especially this day and age where you've got um, you know social media and and you know a lot of people kind of going online to research and things like that. Your brand is constantly out there. It's kind of it's 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 you know always it's always on if you like, and it's it's really on to um, the business themselves to kind of manage that and make sure that whatever people are seeing at any specific point um, in relation to your business, that the brand is coming across really strongly and it's kind of, it's, it, it's managed and it's consistent as well. So a brand basically, Mags, is who you are uh, and what you do. And if you're working in the tourism industry and you have a business in the tourism industry, you are a brand, whether you know it or not. Absolutely. And um, that's your, you know, your brand is almost like your shop window. It's how you present yourself, as Ed has said. It's how you market yourself to your visitors. It's how you promote yourself to the wider community. Um, it speaks volumes. It says everything about what it is you're offering, who it is you're offering to, and, and uh, what experience people can expect when they come to you. Um, I think in the, uh, here in Northern Ireland, we have very familiar brands. We're all, we all know them, Titanic, Causeway Coastal Route, um, Game of Thrones. These are big brands that we're all that are all familiar to us. Mm. That you know that we can work with. Um, but thinking about it, about your own business and how that relates to it and how you relate to that brand, um, I think are key questions. And I suppose what we're going to look at today is some of the the toolkits and the assets that we can um, give people to sort of say, well, how do you establish your brand and how does your brand fit with these bigger brands and how can you. Uh, create opportunities out of that. And Ed, people can't take it for granted. I suppose you have to actively build and manage a brand. Totally. I mean, I mean, I mean, every uh, you know, every business has 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 brand equity, and it's kind of you know, um, some will be stronger than others. I mean, other um, businesses might not necessarily know how their brand is tracking unless they're keeping a constant eye on it. And you know, the easiest the, the easiest way to do this is to kind of, you know, to look at the business, to look at your customers, to see the kind of the reviews and the experiences and the you know the types of things that they are saying about it and seeing you know whether that is you know you're, if you're tracking well that's great you, you know you're obviously doing something right and if you're not then what needs to change that's kind of you know that's the important part of listening and and and, and managing off the back of that really and you, you can't be all things to all people absolutely not no no i mean i think you know you're 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 kind of um you have to find what makes you special what makes you unique what sets you apart from the competition or you know what kind of um, is the thing that you do really, really well and hone in on those things and, and, and concentrate on that irrespective of what else is out there or what else might be popular right now in, in, you know, in your marketplace. Um, what is the thing that you can offer you know, that not necessarily no one else can, but what's the thing that you can offer and do it really well? To determine what your brand is, Mags, how do you go about doing that? Um, well, I suppose there's a number of, of ways you can do that. Um, once you know uh, you yourself what it is you want to offer, you can test the market, you can go out and ask people, you can do that through a range of ways. Um, you can do that simply by just asking people. You can do that through maybe surveys. You can use your social media channels, ask people what is it that they want from you, what else um, do they 
do they need, expect or mm -hmm. want. Um, you can look at what people are saying online, sort of conversations that are being had. And of course, come to tourism in Northern Ireland. We, we meet lots and lots of businesses. We're, we're working with business, the industry every day, and uh, we have lots of information that we can share with you as well. You can get it downloaded from the website. You can lift the phone and talk to our staff. How do you actively manage that brand? NF? There's a little body of work to, to, to almost be done to, to define your brand. And I think um, without getting into to masses and masses of, 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 of theory and detail, in a nutshell, the best way to define your brand is to basically look at the qualities that make your business unique. So, you know, whether that is the providence of your food, whether that is the location that you're based and, and, and the surrounding areas and things like that, important things that set you aside from the competition, listing those things out, they are kind of your almost your internal and external kind of you know properties that you own and you can and you can market and then the second part to defining your brand is is looking at what people like what they can see in your business or what lots of people will see in your business as something that attracts them to to, to that those are almost two elements of it right in the middle in that sweet spot is your brand so if you know if you th if you think about it like that and you know in a nutshell if you audit your business, if you look at your business uh, inside and out, the people, um, the quality, what people are saying online, um, things like that, then you will kind of find out, you know, what makes it unique. Because a lot of businesses don't necessarily kind of um, know what their unique selling point might be at this point. And, you know, through feedback and through research and stuff, they can, they can learn those things as well as looking at it themselves because you know, at the end of the day, they know their business better than anyone, anyone else. So I think it's, it's basically defining it and, and you know, that first and foremost is kind of how you, you, know, how you start to, to define your brand. Part of that, I suppose, Mags, then would be identifying what customers you serve and what customers you'd like to serve. Absolutely. Um, you know your brand, you know who you're trying to target, uh, you, you look at what markets, you know if it's the family market, your brand needs to reflect that. You need to have that family friendly policy. Maybe you want to incorporate the, the Families Welcome Scheme, the Tourism Northern Ireland grading system into, into your, your package, so to speak. Um, so yes, it's very much about um, looking at your target markets, looking at how you want to present yourself you know, what is your shop window? Um, if you think about um, Belfast Food Tour, it's, it's a great example of a five-star rated uh, food experience. Um, everything, all their, 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 from their website through to their marketing materials, through to their online presence, has got that five-star quality about it. And they know that their, their customers expect that. So everything they do is, is um, at that level. So you think about how you want to present yourself who is it you're targeting, and and uh, put your information out there accordingly. Presumably, those examples that Mag has just given, Ed, they know the meaning of their brand, and they're auditing it on a fairly daily basis. How do, you know? How do you kind of evaluate what your brand stands for, and, and how do you how do you then know whether you it's whether you've got the right message out there? Yeah, I think th 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 those are really good examples, and I think um, there probably is whether they know it or not. There's a body of work that they've done, um, and I think you know going right back to before you before you can express your brand or before you can market your brand, as I said before, kind of looking at yourself, you know, um, internally, externally, and you know, th 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 there's there's tools to do this, but you know, one that is quite common to a lot of people um, and, and, and it is very useful to kind of audit your brand is the SWOT analysis. SWOT standing for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. So if you were to kind of put those into four quadrants, um, you, know, like a, you know, like a crosshair and put in each corner, put one of those things, the strengths of your business, you know, off the top of, of, of my head could be you're in a re remote location, your competitive price, um, you know, you're family friendly, you, you know, you might have a spa and sauna or, you know, those types of things. Um, so those are your strengths. Then looking at your weaknesses, they could just be things like, um, you know, high staff turnover. They could be, uh, they could be a remote location as well. You might actually see that as a weakness. You might think we're really isolated out here. We're out of the way. So that might not necessarily be a good thing. Um, and, and then, you know, thinking about, um, you know, opportunities. Opportunities could be external things. So in the area where your business is located, there could be, you know, um, a, a big focus on that specific area, say the North Coast or, you know, you know, near mm -hmm. Amorn. Um, there could be an event coming to that area, which is going to, you know, bring up the kind of the profile. Um, things that are coming 
down the line that you can kind of latch on to. Threats could be things, you know, that are, you know, uh, bad trip advisory reviews, things that were originally in your hands, but are now completely out of your hands because someone's had that experience and they've written something down. So doing that audit and splitting in those into those four quadrants, you start to kind of really list out what is important. And, and I mean, the one, the one kind of bit of advice, the one thing I would say is the shorter that list is, the better, because then you've really thought about it. Because you can, I'm sure, you know, people who run these businesses could list lots of different things in, in, in all those different areas. Yeah, and I think it's important as well to remember there's help out there as well for businesses to, to do this sort of work. You know, um, you can you can avail of Tourism Northern Ireland's um, assessors, you know, through the quality scheme. Assessors will come out there and help you work through that. It's not something to be, you know, fearful of. It's something that they're going to do on a practical level and sit down with you and look at all of that, you know, the strengths and, and areas that you can, you can um, link in with, but also your customers. Your customers can give you feedback. You're asking them every day, are they happy with their breakfast? Are they happy with, with, their, with the room that they, they've, they've slept in and stuff? All of that feedback all adds into your, you know, to, to feed into that process to, to evaluate the, the, the service that you're providing. As Mike says, this can be face-to-face -face feedback, this could be forms, or this can be looking, you know, at what people are saying on TripAdvisor, on Booking.com, on, on, on your social media, you know, uh, platforms be it Twitter or Facebook or you know anything like that all those little bits of information will kind of create the, the, the you know the sum of its parts for you to be kind of see how are we tracking right now how are we looking and, and do we need to change course do we need to change direction or, or you know are we good or you know is what we're doing you know right at the moment so let's have a look at a, a relatively big holistic recent example year of food and drink mm -hmm. mags virtually everybody in the industry in Northern Ireland bought into that uh, how was that set up and how successful was it? Well, it was a Tourism Northern Ireland led initiative um, working with the industry and that was, I think that was the key point. It was very much a collaborative partnership approach. Um, it was a, a year long celebration of everything around food and drink in Northern Ireland, the wonderful Providence, um, our wonderful food, our, our artisan producers. Um, there was an opportunity there for the industry to get involved throughout the year. Um, they may not have got involved every single month. There was a, mm. there was a themed calendar, you know, as a, as a great example that people could use to, to link in with. Um, but that in itself, um, businesses could see that very much working for them on a practical level and how they could, how that brand could support them, whether it was marketing materials, whether it was uh, branding their own, um, you know, uh, produce with with a year of food and drink uh, branding. You know, there were so many different uh, facets to it. Um, I think you know, we we saw at the end of the year there was something like forty one million pounds worth of positive PR around the year of food and drink, and that was that's just a wonderful celebration of what's happening in Northern Ireland. I think you know another great brand example is Game of Thrones. You know, yeah. the opportunities that are presented there for the tourist business is just is just. Uh, you know, infinite really. You know, it's how the, the tourism industry responds to that and how they use that to their advantage. You know, branding, your brand is about assimilating with other brands as much as about promoting your own brand in itself. You know, and it's looking at those opportunities and capitalising on them, really. And of course, a fair amount of Game of Thrones was actually shot in this area. And it's a pretty exciting time for Newry Moore and Down District Council. They've just announced their tourism strategy. Let's hear from their chief executive, Liam Hannaway. We want to see this district be developed as a premier tourism destination on the island of Ireland. So what we have done is we have identified from our in-depth research of what the tourists or international tourists want in their areas. And they, we see the three key assets in terms of the myths and legends, the stories of the area, whether that's St. Patrick, whether that's in Coe-Holland, whether the Game of Thrones, all them myths and stories tied in with the whole maritime experience. We have 150 mile coastline, we have some of the most significant coastlines in terms of the Kale District, Strangford Lock, Carlingford Lock, Murlock Bay, again critically important tourism assets and environmental assets in our own area. We as a council, while we develop the strategy and we facilitate it and bring it forward, it is the businesses in our area who will make this successful because they will set the direction, they will drive it forward and they will influence our thinking about how we need to shape things in terms of marketing and promoting the area. We've currently got about 400,000 visitors per year. We believe we can grow that. 
Well, that was the Chief Executive of Newry Morning Down District Council, Liam Hannaway. When it comes to building a brand, I suppose uh, they're spoiled for choice around here. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, you know, you only need to look at the area and what's going on at the moment. You know, um, obviously, aesthetically, you've got you know the Mourns. Historically, you've got things um, like St Patrick, and then we mentioned it before, but obviously, you know, very current, very popular globally is um, is Game of Thrones. So, I mean, it, the, the the businesses uh, here have so much that they can latch on to and, 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 and capitalize upon um, by way of you know potentially defining their brand. These are lots of external, you know, external factors, but huge draws. Thanks. Yes, I think as well. I suppose here locally they have really captured people's imagination with Narnia, you know, the home of the, the inspiration for C. S. Lewis. Um, and obviously that is, is, is a big selling point. That's a big brand and that's, a, that's an international brand. That's something that you know, has saleable and scalable value. Um, and we've seen now in, in East Belfast, they have um, C.S. Lewis Square with, with these amazing um, statues um, that people can go and, and, and look at and photograph themselves beside things that's great, you know, content that people can share and everything else. You know, those are the things, those are the, the, the things that people really can, can grasp and sort of use to their advantage and then use that brand to sort of get their message out there as well. Well, we've talked a lot about the theory of branding. What about specific examples? Which businesses here have nailed branding and are, and are getting everything right? There's a lovely example on TripAdvisor of um, a bed and breakfast up in Port Stewart uh, on the north coast there, on the Causeway Coastal Route, um, where Colourg, it's called Colourg uh, Guest House, and they very much promote that as uh, you know as, as their brand. You know, and it's an unusual name, and it's one of the things, the first things that their visitors ask them when they arrive, where does it stem from? Um, but they have uh, a lovely um, rating from one of their customers and visitors that came to see them and, and they then told the story about Colourg and then the visitors said people really need to go and talk to yeah. the talk to the, the whole owners and find out why because this is such a fascinating story and they've followed up on that and had a conversation and that's all adding to that brand, totally. that's all feeding that lovely experience and the story yeah. behind the business. Or to overestimate the importance of online sources like TripAdvisor and Booking.com and social media channels in this day and age, Ed. Yeah, I mean, uh, they are the they are the first port of call in this day and age. You know, if if um, a an online recommendation from somewhere else is 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 so much more kind of um, meaningful, because uh, I mean, a brand is going to say or a business is going to say that they are great, um, but what is so much more impactful is um, you know when someone says it on your behalf um, it's it's you know it's a concept that's referred to as social proofing and it's you know it is so so powerful but they only derive that that free advertising if you like only derives from someone who actually has had a good experience um, and and they're so public and they're so popular um, I mean I can't think of a you know a, a, a trip or a, you know anything that I've kind of booked without going to those kind of port of calls first so I mean they're they're they're, they're massively important yeah, and it's also it's it's not just the promotion; it's also having an impact on your bottom line, because you know it's an often oft quoted uh, statistic that the difference between a four star and a five star rating can mean double bookings. Now that's quite significant <laughs> to an accommodation provider or a visitor attraction. You know, it it really is affecting that bottom line and and the economies of scale for your business. Consistency of message is pretty important. If you go to all this effort to build this brand, you, you've got to be consistent. You've got to be consistent and you also have to make sure that you're constantly reviewing that. You know, you have to keep asking yourself, is this right? Are the customers coming? Are they happy with this? You look at what they're saying on their social media channels, what they're saying when they're to you face to face, what people are saying on TripAdvisor. Those, those are all important tools that you can use to, to assess how your business is doing. And don't be afraid as well to lift the phone to tourism in Northern Ireland and give our, our staff a, a, you know, a phone as well and have a chat with them and see, right, well, what else can we do? What else is out there that we can benefit from? What else can make us better? Big thanks to Ed and to Mags for joining us. Thank you for your time. Also, thanks to Southern Regional College for providing the venue for this video series here at the Green Shoots Incubation Centre. Here is the Chief Executive of SRC, Brian Doran. The College's Business Support Unit, I3, which stands for Industry, Innovation and Incubation, is very much the outward-facing arm of the College directly engaging with business and industry right across the region. Last year, we were involved in supporting over 300 different companies regionally. And we would encourage 
any small, medium, large business to knock our door, come and make contact with us, uh, to make that first step across the door is an important step. And the type of work that we've been doing in recent times in, the, in supporting the tourism and hospitality industry uh, is very much focused on embedding digital technologies. Uh, we will be responsive, we will develop a good partnership with business and industry because it's important to us, our role at the end of the day is to support businesses right across the region to help them to innovate and to grow. Well, that's it for this episode. Remember to get in touch with any thoughts you might have. We're always happy to hear from you and we'll see you for more of the same next time. All the best for now. Bye bye.